Hello. We're getting ready to go into chapters 10, 11, and 12 of Judges. And uh, chapter 10 opens up with just a couple of Judges' names. We don't get any stories about them, but Tola and Jair. And then we get into Jephthah in the first part of chapter 10. Uh, it's not really about him, though. It's really about how they fell away. And I want to point out a couple of things to you uh, that I think are interesting. Uh, chapter 10, verse 6. And again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. We know that. And they served the Baals and Ashtoreth and the gods of Aram, Sidon, Moab, Ammonites, Philistines, because the Israelites forsook God. Uh, it's interesting to me how when we start falling away from the one true God, we will just bite on anything. And that's what they did. They just took anything and everything. They, they all worked for them. Uh, however, down in verse 16, the end of verse 16, there's a, a section that I think is, is well worth looking at. It says, and he, talking about the Lord, could bear Israel's misery no longer. Uh, the King James says it grieved his spirit. It grieved him that, uh, that they were doing this. And so he wanted to do something about it. Even though we bring pain and agony on ourselves, it grieves God that we do that. And I think that's well worth knowing. That's If that's not a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ, I don't know what is. Uh, so then uh, we go on and we find out that uh, more about Jephthah. Jephthah has a spotted background. He's an illegitimate son. His brothers kicked him out, but he's a mighty warrior. And when they need him, they, they go to get him. Uh, so what he, he ends up doing is, is he defeats the, the kings. Uh, there's an interesting a letter that's written back and forth explaining all that went on during the wanderings. And it's interesting reading. But then Jephthah does something that's very strange. He promises to the Lord that if he will deliver the enemies into his hands, that the first thing that comes out of the doorway of his house, he will sacrifice to him. And he's thinking in terms of a goat or a pig or an animal, not a pig, there is Um But anyway, he's thinking of an animal and out comes his daughter. This is a passage It is very hard to understand. I claim no special understanding of it. Uh, just read it and, and see. I believe that there is some parallelism uh, to Jesus uh, being offered as a sacrifice for our sins. Uh, Jephthah has offered a sacrifice that turns out to be his daughter, his only daughter, uh, for victory that the Lord gives them. So anyway, interesting. When we get to chapter 12, uh, we see a very strange uh, thing that has happened once before, and that is that the Ephraimites come out, and they say to Jephthah, why have you done this by yourself? Why didn't you come get us? Remember, they said the same thing to, to Gideon right after he had defeated the Moabites. They said, well, why didn't you call us? And now, he was able to talk his way out of it and explain to them why Jephthah wasn't as much. They end up having a battle. Jephthah wins. Jephthah dies. That's the end of that story. Uh, then you see three more, uh, Ibsen, Elon, and uh, Abdon uh, are three more judges. There are no real stories to go with them. So we're getting set up now for one that we all know. Starting in chapter 13, we have Samson. So enjoy the readings. Uh, look for Jesus in these readings. He's actually there everywhere, but sometimes just a little bit hard to find. So take a look. I hope you enjoy, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.